We're in a company called Post Logic, right in the heart of Hollywood, California, where we're working on the Blu-ray version of the French Connection. What we do in this room is to color time the film uh, so that the colors are as they were meant to be when the film was originally shot. In this case, about 38 years ago. Now, given this video process versus like 35 millimeter negative film, this is much better. You have much more latitude and flexibility than you ever had color timing a movie for theaters. Some time ago when I started timing my films, I remembered a film called Moby Dick. And what they did in that film was very unusual. In those days, color was not made from a single negative. It was made from three strips that Technicolor had invented. There was a yellow strip of film made from the negative, a cyan strip, and a magenta strip. With Moby Dick, they got the idea to add a black and white strip so that they timed the color as good as they could get it and then they mixed it with a black and white strip and out came a picture that looked so different from all other Technicolor films. The film had a pastel look. It didn't look like harsh uh, color that was used to, you know, to light one of the great uh, musicals of that period. But it was soft, it was pastel, and it was the black and white layer that made that possible. So I remember asking the color timer, if we could achieve something like that um, with digital video. And he said, I don't know, I've never tried it, but why don't we give it a try? And so We've done that now on three or four films that, that I've directed, and now we're attempting to do it with the French Connection, which I think will produce a print better than any that has ever been produced in any medium of this film. The color timer is a gentleman over here named Brian McMahon, who hey. I've worked with, hi Brian, many, many times. And um, Brian and I have worked on many of my films to take them to video and now this is our really our first project in Blu-ray. The French Connection is a dark drama so I want less color. I don't want no color. I don't want it to be black and white. I want just a little bit of the color bleeding in and this is how we go about it. First of all, you get the negative of the film that was shot 30 years ago. Brian, let's take a look at how that negative looked when you got it. Sure. This is our negative here without any color correction. It's a basic one light scan of the negative. As you can see, it lacks definition. It's sort of a faded monochrome. And this is the way it came in when you saw it. Right. The skin tones are kind of muted. It's a soft look. You, you would never want to sell this uh, no. as a good copy of the French Connection. No. So what you then started to do, the first process, is to start to make this look like a good color copy of it. Can you give us an indication of what you went through to do that? Sure. This is uh, the original negative. If I switch over here, now this is the same scene that is color corrected for a normal color correction. The negative kind of comes in flat, desaturated. Right. So by adding the contrast and giving it kind of that cool look, this is what you'd see on 99.9% .9 of the DVDs. If you wanted a colder feel, if it's supposed to be Russia in, in, in winter or something, then we're going to go bluer maybe a little darker. Say I wanted it warmer. Let's say it's the south of France uh, in the summer. You could make it as warm as you want. Go ahead and make it even warmer. Sure. You start to see the red coming up in that ship on screen left. You start to see um, their skin tones become warmer and richer as though they've been out in the sun a lot. This is more like California or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So now we, we wanted to make it sort of neutral. Okay, we want to neutralize it. 
but cold. Yeah. But cold. It still has a cool feel. Um, but yeah, that's a little more of a neutral look. Keep in mind that I wanted to take this normal neutral look and make it colder and have a more of a pastel feeling, have less color than what you're seeing now. So Brian, let's show them what we had to go through to get to that. You, you would, you've made the color, as you would say, normal. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go to a black and white. I'm gonna suck all the color out of it. So that's our black and white version. It still has the correct density of what we want, the brightness, the darkness of the scene, but I'm just sucking all the color, the chroma out of it. And this black and white version becomes the base upon which we're building right. the final color copy. It was not enough, we found, to simply bleed normal color into black and white. Right. And Caleb Deschanel came up with the idea that if we're going to use the black and white as a base, maybe we ought to have an oversaturated version of the color, oversaturated, which we're about to show you, and just bleed that in to a very brief, very small extent. Show us sure. what that looks like. So if I take the same version, I'm going to oversaturate that. Everything's going to be just electronic, too much color. And what we found is if we, we oversaturated and then we defocus the color, so there's no hard edges to the color. So it, when we blend that in, it gives a more pastel-y look to it because there's no hard edges in the color. You get the hard edges from the black and white, so you get the sharpness. But the color just kind of mutes a little bit more. It's not only oversaturated, the color is out of focus. Now, let's go to the black and white version and bleed this into it to the extent that we wanted to achieve the pastel look. Right, well here's our black and white version. So now I'm gonna to start to bleed in some of that color. And we ended up approximately in here, which is we're using about 28% of the color versus 70, 72% of, of the black, of the and, black white. and white. Right. Now, let's cut between this, which is close to our final version, mm -hmm. and what you would call the normal color time. Just cut back and forth between them. So that's normal. Right. And then that is our soft, our more of a pastel. So it's very subtle. It's very subtle. It's not something that leaps out at you or that looks like a, a big change in color. No. Why don't we move this and then cut back and forth between the so-called normal color timing and the four-strip color timing mm -hmm. that the audience is seeing. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is our end product. This is our end product. Now cut back to what would have been normal. And let's watch it for a while and just cut to the process. There's our process. It's very subtle. 30%. Now cut into what was normal color. You see the flowers take on more color. You can almost see Audrey Hepburn dancing down the lane there. And in a film like French Connection, you don't want to really feel that. Right. And so now let's go to our color process. You see that uh, their skin, t now go back and forth. You see their skin tones are much hotter, her hair is much redder in the so-called normal color. Right. Now go to the process. Here's the process. It is subdued, it is more pastel. Right. The main reason I think I was drawn to this process is because of the skin tones. The mm -hmm. skin tones on an average um, color film are usually too warm. The makeup look, pancake makeup, tends to make the skin look darker, uh, richer, right. warmer, rather than pale. In the French Connection, nobody wore makeup. And, and the other thing, it kind of smooths out the picture as far as film grain, because the blue grain is the larger grain in the emulsion. So when you look at skies, they get grainy, and, and so this kind of smooths all that out because you're defocusing that color. 
Now, why don't we stop this for a second and go down to the chase scene and show them what we did with the chase scene. I think this is a good place to, to pick it up. Okay, so what we're looking at now is the original negative of the chase scene. Right. Let's roll a little of it. This is the original negative that we're looking at right now. Okay, now sh let's show them the black and white layer of this. Just cut to it. It's in, it's in sync now, I trust. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's run that. And this is the what became the black and white master, the foundation for the entire print. Now let's look at the oversaturated color version of it. Very hard to look at, certainly. Right. And now let's blend that into the black and white and look at that for a while. And now this that you're looking at is the final version of the Blu-ray timing of the chase scene. As you can see, there is color but the color is very subtle, and yet there's still contrast. Right. Um, do you think we have enough contrast, by the way? Um, we actually can add a little more. I let's let's add a little contrast into it. Sure. And have it come off as a sharper, uh, more in-your-face event. Right. This is our normal color. So this is our mix with a little more contrast. That looks pretty good. Yeah. I wanted to say that a lot of you might look at this and say, gee, the normal version of that looked just as good. Well, it may to your eye, but to my eye and what I'm looking for here is less color because to my mind, bright, uh, extravagant color is associated more with a comedy or a musical and for dramatic purposes I wanted the pastel color that is achieved by this process. Right. So now we're running a little more contrast mm -hmm. with the pastel oh. final version. Right. I think it looks pretty good. So thank you for this Brian. Thank you. And uh, thank you for watching, folks, and I hope you enjoy the film.